Hi guys, welcome back to our Porsche restoration project. What I've got in this video is the steering shaft and U-joints. I'm going to take this apart, go through it step by step, show you how to repack all the bearings, put it back together, and get it operating like new again. This would be the same steering shaft for 911 and 912. Uh, problem with this particular part of the car, if it's not working 100%, your steering isn't going to feel quite right. And then also if you have to replace these knuckles, uh, it can be quite expensive. So this would be an excellent way to refresh this part and see how it's done. Also, current conditions in Las Vegas right now are ranging anywhere from 110 to 115 degrees every day, so haven't had much of an opportunity to get outside and do a cut and polish on our shell. So we'll go through some of these technical aspects, uh, break down these components, see how to refresh them, get them back to uh, new condition, and uh, hopefully the heat breaks by then we can get outside. Okay, so I'm going through some steering components. What I've got here is the steering shaft and U-joints. So I've broken them down, and what I want to do is uh, thoroughly clean out the cups, the needle bearings, repack them, and put them back together. Um, these look like you can't get into them and, and do this job, but actually it is doable. What I've done is I've taken the U-joints down to a machine shop and had them press them out. I use HDS out of Escondido. Um, do quite a bit of work back in the San Diego area, even though I live in Las Vegas. Um, so anytime I'm back there, I have some some uh, machine work that needs to be done. I stop by there and have Casey take care of it. Real nice shop, uh, very professional, super clean, and always do a real nice, careful job for you. Um, this wasn't expensive at all, so I took my U-joints down there, have press them out uh, very gently, $20, and uh, I'm good to go. So now what I want to do uh, that I got them apart I'm going to clean them. I've got one that's cleaned up here. So here's one that's clean. Yeah, get a light in there, show you the needle bearings. They're really pretty small. Very, very small. Uh, 20 needle bearings per cup. And uh, so we want to clean the want to clean the U-joint and we want to clean the cup and the bearings and then repack it, put it back together. And then here's one that uh, hasn't been cleaned. Light in there. Um, anyhow, they, they, they still have some grease in there, and uh, action was real good, but you could tell they're, uh, they just needed to be repacked. So if, if you don't do this and you want to replace the knuckles, um, you're looking at about $400 a piece, and even if you spend the $400 a piece, um, they don't exactly match up, so uh, not made anymore. These parts are impossible to get new. Um, you might be able to find a nice U set on eBay or maybe one of the clubs you could get something. So, you know, it is possible to go through these and get a real nice job done. Uh, main thing is to be thorough. And then uh, probably the only thing you're going to destroy in getting them apart, you're going to need some new clips for reassembly. And then also these have a little rubber dust boot that will probably be sacrificed in um, getting them apart. However, I don't think this car is going to be seeing much dust uh, for the remainder of its lifetime. So uh, nice packing should give us real good action. So let's get one of these apart and I'm going to show you how to clean it in a gasoline solution without losing anything. And then uh, we'll take it apart here on the bench. Okay, so let's first clean this U-joint here. Um, you can see it's a little bit grungy. Got some old grease on there. Some of it's dried out. Uh, but the gasoline, I like to use gasoline because it's much gentler on the rubber. Um, also, if you have any yellow cadmium plated uh, nuts and bolts, any kind of fasteners, um, it doesn't affect that in a negative way. Um, and it's just really, it's more, it's more uh, grease friendly uh, than some of the solvents. I've not had good luck with any solvents over the counter to clean any parts. But no smoking while you're doing this. You can end up with uh, quite a surprise. No open flames. And also, uh, gasoline evaporates fairly quickly. So, put just a little bit in there. You won't have much of a disposable problem. All right, so that's starting to look pretty good. You can see that rubber down in there now. It's uh, starting to clean up. Just clean the shafts. And once we think we're clean, um, we'll stop there. 
Okay, just set that on some paper towel. Now uh, our needle bearing and cup. So what we want to do is we don't want to lose anything. So I'm just going to soak this, get some gasoline in there. Soak this Q-tip and then just start working it around in there. And eventually what will happen, the old dried out grease that's holding them in place is going to break down and then they're going to start falling out of their place, which is okay. We're going to get them out of there anyways. And then also I like to use a, a brass wire brush, tune up the outsides, get the grooves cleaned out. And then I'll go over the, uh, the outer surface with an 800 grit, this surface here, and then the inside of the cup or the inside of the, uh, the U-joint where it's going to slide in. I'll use a 800 grit to tune it up. Okay, you can see now our bearings are starting to loosen up. You can see the movement in there. There they are falling apart. Okay, we're just about there. A little more agitation. Okay, so that's the process. Um, it's going to be clean. All that grease is going to be broken down. You can see one bearing laying down in there. So I'm going to set this on some paper towel and carry it back over to the bench. Okay, got this one cleaned up. You can see here, uh, nice and shiny. And no galding or grooves or any kind of problem on our on our joint. So this one's going to be real nice packed and uh, we'll give plenty of good service after we're done with it. No reason to throw that away at all. Okay, let's take a look at the, the needle bearings. You can see now they're all falling out. So just falling down in there. So let's get those out of there. Take a small screwdriver and just dig them out very gently. Okay, that's it. Got a little runaway needle bearing. Okay, that's it. So that's that's what it's going to look like in there. And then I'm going to take a Q-tip. Still got a little gasoline in there. And we're going to clean out the inside. Get all that old grease out of there. Any kind of dirt. And that's it. Good as new. And then these guys here, we'll just gently pad them. Clean them up, and we're good to go. Okay, so then I'm using a, uh, a high temperature uh, wheel bearing type grease. So uh, this is nice and thick, nice and sticky, and uh, will be real easy to pack these little needle bearings in there. So what I do, I do a little bit on a Q-tip. And clean out or stick up the inside. Nice and sticky in there. I just load up a little bit in there. It doesn't have to be a terrible amount. And then uh, gently start putting our needle bearings back in there. One at a time. You can see you can see how they just stick to the side there and uh, stand upright, no problem. So let me just go ahead and press all those in there and then we'll uh, put it back on the U-joint. Okay, you can see how they're packing in the side there. A little light on that. So uh, real easy to stand up and put them in one at a time. Actually, the screwdriver seems to be working real good one up at a time. Just set it in there. Next one. So not too bad. Also if you drop some of these uh, needle bearings in your cleaning solution, um, easy to pick them out with a magnet. So as long as you are not dropping things on the floor, this should go pretty smooth for you. 
Okay, we'll finish those up and then uh, see what they look like. Okay, guys, so this is the last one. Um, you can see they're all standing up in there now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just seat it on the shaft uh, without loading it up with grease first, just to kind of align everything. Put it on there. And now all the pins are aligned. I'll take it apart. I'll take our grease. And now I'm going to fill it up. A big blob in there. And so what I want to do now is just squish it out. That way it presses grease into all the behind the behind the spindles. Just kind of turning and agitating. And you see that grease oozing out of there. There, that's the right amount of grease in there. Okay, good as new. That's what it looks like all cleaned up. I just wipe it down with paper towel. And then uh, I will keep these in a plastic bag and put them in a freezer overnight before uh, I get ready to install them in the U-joints themselves or in the receiver part. Okay, not bad on doing that job. It's about two hours to get through both of those uh, 100%. So 160 needle bearings, clean them up, repack them, put them back together, and back in business. So I'm going to tune up the outside, uh, this area here with some 800 grit. Also the inside, uh, just run some 800 grit through there and make sure we don't have any burrs in there. Um, and then I'm going to POR15 this, clean it up real good, get our POR15 on there, replate our bolts and put it back together. And then also uh, while I'm cleaning parts up, I did the um, inner bearing on this also. This, this is amazing. This part, 50 years old. Rubber on there is as supple as the day it was new. And uh, bearings in perfect condition. Also the felt bushings, uh, perfect condition. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse this. Um, but I won't repack it until I get ready to put it on and install it. This goes to this area here. And I'm going to do a video on rebuilding this entire unit and uh, bringing it back to show condition also. So let me go get some clips, get this thing painted up. We'll put it back together and see what it looks like. Okay, got one side all put together. Uh, I'm getting ready to set this one up in the vise and press it in for you. So I was able to reuse most of the clips that we pulled out of here. However, a couple of them did break, so I had to improvise and make a couple. This was the closest thing I could find to do the job. So what I got here is a metric circlip, the same inside radius as uh, the ones we pulled out of there. So the only difference would be after I modify it, this is one that I've done here, is uh, I, I take some snips, just clip the ends off, and then uh, my die grinder, and just put a slight inside radius here uh, so that when we slide it in, when we press it on there, uh, its point of entry has uh, an easy entry, so we're not galling anything or scoring anything. That'll work real good. Doesn't have our fancy little ears that our stock ones have, but we'll definitely get the job done and hold that in there, no problem. Okay, let's set the vise up, get this guy pressed together. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is take our inside area and just run a little KB88, put it on a Q-tip, just run a light coating in there. Uh, not running all over the place, just, just enough to give it a lubrication. And what that'll do is that'll help assist the uh, needle bearing cup slide in there without galling it. And this, this uh, KB88 will evaporate, so uh, won't have any chance of it spinning after it sets up. Okay, fresh out of the freezer, so I'm going to take this out of here. Very cold. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these cups off. The grease is a little bit frozen. Uh, you can see I'm a lot more sticky now. Uh, just pull those off of there and uh, slide them back on, being careful that we don't accidentally pull the needle bearings out or have them land sideways, which would stop it from bottoming out. So if you've got a needle bearing in there that's fallen down, it probably won't 
bottom out. We need it to bottom out. So if it's sticking about here, it means you got a needle bearing stuck in there. You have to take it back apart again. Okay, so we got to kind of work quick as uh, as this is coming back up to room temperature. So what we want to do is we want to take the bearings off gently. stick this guy in here and then gently slide those back over the shafts still not going to go in that far because it, it is tight you be careful you don't get it in there crooked there we go I can feel it gently get this one started Okay, just kind of a uh, kind of a rickety setup, but uh, if you had another pair of hands, it would be even easier. So what I'm going to try and do is just get it started gently with the vise, just going real slow, real gentle. Just get it started. I'm using a small, this is a 11 millimeter quarter drive socket to just sit down inside there. And I'm using the, the pad here with some protection on it for a backup and a ball peen hammer and just tapping until, until it seats. You can see now we're seated there and seated there. Uh, but what we got to do now is we got to get we got to get that inside groove You see right down at the bottom there where we put our put our uh, retaining clip on So what we want to do is we want to put one side on first So that it's on there and you have a gap there and then what we'll do is we'll drive this side back down to it Till it bottoms out. Once it once it bottoms out against there, you should start to see the inner clip uh, area reveal itself. But you can see we still got a little ways to go. Okay, there it is. Take it. Okay, there's that one in there. You can see the clips. The one we made up, and then the uh, the factory clip up top there. And no no binding. Feels nice and tight, and uh, plenty of packing in there. All right, let's slide the other side in. Getting these in there is it's kind of a combination of working the tapping it and pressing it. But it doesn't seem like uh, either one of these will do the job entirely. Okay, and the light slightly started there. Once you get it started, it'll drift in there. Also, I'm using a ball peen hammer. I'm not sure, 24 ounce. Uh, this seems to work best. If your hammer is too light, you're going to be hitting it too hard, and the energy won't drive it down in there. Just a nice thud. All right, got one side in. And we'll take this guy. to go. Oh. Yeah. Nice, I could feel it go a little bit farther. 
okay, I've got plenty of area now. You can see in there plenty of area to put our clip. Let's get that in there. Okay. And then flip it over and drift in the other one. So yeah, it sits down inside. It's actually not riding up here, right down inside that cup area. Okay. I think we're there. Okay, that's it. Then I like to give it just one tap, uh, both directions, just to make sure it's centered between the two locking pins and the clips. There you go, no binding at all. Should easily get another 50 years out of that. Okay, let's slide it on the shaft, put some bolts in there, see what she looks like. Okay, so then sliding it back on our steering shaft, uh, our distance from our end to the center of our notch is the same on both ends, center and notch, and that's to uh, allow for the bolt to pass through this area. Uh, when we slide it on there, it needs to line up directly with that cup. If we're one tooth off this way or one tooth off that way, the bolt's not going to go through there, so um, just kind of have to wiggle, wiggle it a little bit, play with it, and uh, you'll be able to see when you're sliding it on there. It's really not that bad. So let's press them on there and get some bolts. Okay, guys, there she is, all put back together. Got our needle bearings nicely repacked, fresh paint on there, and ready to go back on the car. Got a small piece on the car, but a real important piece on uh, how it feels and how it steers. Definitely worthwhile taking the time to redo these. So next video, we're going to go through the steering rack, all the different components on that, and refresh it and bring it back to new condition. Quite a bit going on with that piece. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.